If you've got a raging hunger, but not much time on your hands, pasta's always going to be the go-to ingredient. But we can all get very lazy about cooking pasta. It's so easy just to reach for another tin of tomatoes. So I'm going to knock up a couple of really simple pasta dishes, each of which is based around a single vegetable ingredient that are just as easy to lay your hands on as the ubiquitous tin of tomatoes. And I'm going to start with macaroni peas. Macaroni peas is, well, easy peasy. All I need is some peas, some macaroni, some butter, garlic, basil, and any good hard grating cheese. As with all pasta dishes, I'm starting by adding a good shake of salt to a large pan of boiling water. A generous knob of butter goes into a frying pan with some grated garlic. I just want to gently sizzle this grated garlic in the foaming butter, just for a minute or two to take the edge off it. I don't want to colour it or brown it in any way. I'm using freshly potted peas here, but this recipe works brilliantly with frozen peas too. A few minutes later, my peas are done. Now I want roughly half the peas and a little bit of the pea cooking water in here. And then straight into the blender, together with my gorgeous buttery garlic. Don't forget to season this with a good few twists of black pepper. That is creamy, garlicky, and peaty. Absolutely delicious. This lovely creamy peas puree is going back in the pan over a very low heat. Now it's time to grate in a good nugget of the hard cheese. You can use Parmesan or a good strong cheddar, but this is my very favorite semi-hard grateable goat's cheese. And the sauce is ready in even less time than it took to cook the pasta. Look at that. Such a beautiful colour when it comes together. And the cheese is just melting gently into the hot pea puree. But of course we haven't finished it quite yet because we've still got those lovely whole peas to throw in at the end. For a final flourish, garnish with some more grated cheese and some freshly shredded basil. And there you have it, macaroni peas, easy cheesy. That really took no time at all, so now on to quick pasta dish number two. This pasta dish is all about intense mushroominess. To make sure I've got that I'm using two different types of mushroom, the regular white ones and these lovely tawny chestnut mushrooms, which have got a particularly good flavour. But it's also very much about the shape of the pasta. And I think that if you cook pasta often, you should ring the changes with your pasta shapes. Not just because it's a bit of fun, but also because you really do get a different experience from eating different shapes of pasta, and they work with different ingredients in special ways. I've chosen one of my favourites, which I don't think gets an outing nearly often enough. It's sometimes called orzo, but it's also known as risoni, and as that word suggests, it is the rice-shaped pasta. It particularly comes into its own when it's stirred into a strongly flavoured, creamy sauce to make almost a pastry version of a risotto. And that's what I'm about to do with my mushrooms. I'm going to make a mushroom risoniotto. There's nothing that mushrooms love more than a hot frying pan, a generous glug of olive oil, and a good knob of butter. I'm going to put a couple of pinches of salt in with the mushrooms at the beginning of cooking, because it helps to draw the moisture out of them. And then I'll adjust the seasoning again at the end. I don't want to distract too much from the lovely flavour of these Dorset-grown mushrooms, so I'm not going overboard with my other ingredients. Just a few finely chopped cloves of garlic and a pinch of fresh chopped thyme leaves. Our 
After seasoning well with a few twists of black pepper, I'm adding a little dash of balsamic vinegar and a splash of white wine to give my mushrooms just a little bit of a kick. It's really important to let the wine bubble away till it's almost disappeared, otherwise the sauce is going to be too wet. That smells lovely. And the mushrooms are not far off now, so I'm going to get my risoni in the pan. And while that's bubbling down, two good tablespoons of double cream will add a luxurious touch. My risoni are done and ready to meet my creamy mushrooms. And I'm just shaking it together so that all the mushrooms and all the risoni have got a lovely glossy coating of cream. To top it off, a scattering of chopped fresh parsley. Lovely. Now, I think in mushroomy pasta dishes, any kind of grated cheese at the end is strictly optional. And I actually prefer parsley to parmesan because it gives the dish a beautiful colour and a little fresh lift at the end. Time to dive in. A little bit of bite from the mushrooms, some sharpness from the wine and the vinegar, tender soft pasta, a creamy edge, and then that fresh zesty lift from the parsley at the end. It's really magical.